What's up YouTube, Oliver from Tech TV here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the iDraw app, which is a vector drawing app for Mac OS X, and it also has an iOS app, which is great because you can just take it on the go with you and continue your drawings because it's all synced over iCloud. So firstly we're going to take a look at the Mac app, and this is what it looks like. I've just drawn a sample floor plan just to test out one of the features in it. One of the first things you'll notice are all these tools on the sides. You have all of your tools over here. You've got lines, you can do arcs, you can also do text. You know, so you've got the pen tool and things here to manually draw shapes, and you can also draw predefined shapes such as rectangles, rounded rectangles, ellipse, and polygon, and star. And you've just got lots of transformation tools here. And when you first open up a document, when you create a new document, you have the option to choose what kind of background you want and you can also set this up um, in the grid, you can uh, adjust the grid or you can go over to the page settings here. And there's so much you can do, there's a load of predefined symbols over here as well which is how I make the floor plan, there's just some standard sort of sign symbols. And then if you click on these little arrows there's things like floor plans which are all sort of symbols for different things you might have around the house. And this is quite cool, iPhone mockups. So there's actually some things like iPhones built in there, which is great if you're an iOS developer and you want to create apps because all of the iOS interface is also there. For both iPhone and there's also a sketchy version there. We've got numbers, which is good for doing, say, an instructional leaflet on how to build something and you want to sort of say it step by step. And then back to the symbols that I had before. So you've also got some little things down here that let you put the dimensions in. And let's just draw a few things. So if I draw a rectangle, I can just draw it how I want it, or I can obviously hold shift to constrain it to a square. <clears throat> and then all over here are all of your settings to do with the shape. So you've got your position and your size, and you can rotate it from here. Okay, and you can also use this tool here, which is called the Convert tool. And if you click on your shapes and things like that, so if I've got my um, square selected, say if I grab onto a corner, I can edit the, the vector paths and things like that, the shape. Uh, let's just take a look at the text tool. So I'll show you how that works. You can choose all your fonts and colors. You've also got some options to do with spacing and things there. If we just type something here, and I just increase the size, so it's not going to see it quite clearly. Unfortunately though, one of the things you can't do with the text tool is edit the anchor points in any way. You can't customize the lettering because if you just try and change it, it's just within a box that you can't do anything with. Um, so that's just one of the downsides that you can't really edit the text, which is a shame, but you know. So we'll have a look at some of these things up here now. So we've got I mean, uh, appearance inspector that lets you have a look at sort of the colour and things like that. If that's switched on, it's like the colour, you can turn that off. But it basically, there's like the stroke and the colour and the, the colour and the label and that kind of thing. Again, your symbols library, your uh, colour styles down at the bottom, and your geometry properties at the top. So that's this whole bar down at the side here. Let's just open up a new document so you can see this. And this is what, what you get presented with. You've got loads of different settings, so I could just have blank for this one. The presets, you've got some def like predefined things here. You can make your own custom. We're just going to go with A4 and then choose. And it all opens up in tabs across the top, which is quite nice. So you can easily get between different things you might be working on. And you can also go up file and export, and you can export in a number of formats here. PDF, which is, you probably know what a PDF document is, and SVG, which is a standard vector application. You could open that in a program like Illustrator. And if you save it in that format, if you were doing a logo, for example, it wouldn't lose any quality if you needed to enlarge it or something like that. <coughs> We've got some standard image formats all along here and you've got some options about what scale and resolution you want to save that at. Okay, so you can see that the price for this um, at the moment is £17.49 which is an absolutely fantastic price 
for a very full-featured graphic design uh, vector program. It's great if you're just starting out, you know, graphic design. It's an essential thing that you need, especially if you're drawing logos and such. So, uh, my overall thoughts on iDraw, that it's a very good app, a very good price as well, and I think that it's definitely worth purchasing because it's a good alternative to using something like Illustrator, which could cost several hundred pounds that you probably don't need and it's a little bit complicated to use compared to this being very simple. It's the kind of thing that anyone would pick up and start using. It's just brilliant and it's a great purchase for anyone that needs vector drawing application.